This is the first in a series of tutorials to introduce HTML markup while building a sample site plan. Prior to beginning, download the zipped file using the link found on the page where this video is located. After downloading, unzip the file and move the plan demo folder to your sandbox project to begin working on the demo. Opening the plan demo folder, you should see that you have a folder named images, which contains the sample images used in these tutorials. To begin, let's create a new HTML5 web page. Using NetBeans, right click on the plan demo folder and from the options menu, select new, then HTML5 file. In the new HTML file dialog box, name the file plan. NetBeans will automatically add the extension .html. Click finish. When the new file is created, NetBeans will open it in the canvas area. Take a moment and look at the new file. On line one is the HTML5 doc type declaration. It tells the browser that this page is written in HTML5. Lines 2 through 6 are a default comment. This can be deleted or altered to remind you of the purpose of this file. Let's do that now. Take a look at the new comment in the video and write something similar in your own words in your own file. Beneath the comment is the opening HTML tag, and its matching closing tag is the last line of code on the page. The HTML element is also known as the root element because it is the parent of all other HTML elements and surrounds all other elements. The doc type declaration is not an HTML element. The HTML element has two children head and body. The head element opens immediately following the HTML element and closes prior to the opening of the body opening tag. The head element holds information that the browser needs to properly build, also known as parse, the web page. You will notice that the head element has three children, title and two meta elements. The title holds text that appears in a browser tab or window that briefly describes the content of the page. The meta element with the car set attribute tells the browser what characters the content of the page should use. UTF-8 is a universal character set capable of displaying almost every character in most world languages. If you want to know more, do a search for UTF-8. The final meta element is very useful for responsive web development, which will be discussed in a later video. Before leaving the head element, let's add a meaningful title, then do a bit of rearranging of elements, and finally add one additional meta element. Beginning with the title, delete the placeholder text in the title and replace it with Sample Site Plan. According to the HTML5 specification, the meta element used to declare the character set should appear within the first 256 characters of the web page. To ensure that this happens, let's move it to be before the title. Finally, let's add one additional meta element to indicate that we are the author of the file. Click at the end of the closing title tag and press your enter or return key, creating a new blank line beneath the title element. Type a new meta element with a name attribute equal to author 
and a content attribute equal to your own name. When done, type a greater than sign. Meta elements are referred to as void elements because they have no closing tag. Eliminate any blank lines in the head element so that your page looks similar to what you see in the video. If you look at the tab with the file name plan.html in NetBeans, you should see that it is in bold. This is a visual indicator that the file has not been saved. Save the file by clicking the double disk icon in the toolbar or using your keyboard. Command plus S for the Mac or Control plus S for Windows. The tab should now return to normal text. Be sure to save your work frequently. The body element currently contains a div with the content of to do followed by write content. In web development, to do is a common statement that precedes something to be done. In this case, it is a reminder to write content. The body element is where all content to be placed in the page will go. If you want your content to be seen in a web browser, it must be placed in the body. For now, highlight the line containing the div and delete it. Our page is nowhere near complete, but the foundations are in place for us to actually begin adding our site plan content. Before doing so, let's make one or two changes to NetBeans. On the screen, you will see a red vertical line near the right side of the page. This will vary depending upon the resolution of your monitor. That red line is the right margin guide and is meant to convey to us that that is the typical maximum length for a line of text. But you will notice that the comment exceeds it in width. By default, NetBeans does not do auto text wrapping. Let's enable that now. Open the NetBeans Preferences. In Windows, use the Tool menu and choose Options. In Mac, use the NetBeans menu and choose Preferences. In the dialog box, click Editor, then click Formatting. Turn off the Use All Languages Settings checkbox. Click the Line Wrap drop-down list and choose After Words. When you save your settings and resize the window in NetBeans, lines of text will wrap with the window. Click Fonts and Colors. In the right column you will see Font and to the right of it a text box with monospaced 13. This is the default font in all of the pages. If this font is too small for you, click the ellipse button to the right and choose a different font or font size. When done, click OK twice to close and save the changes. All changes should now be shown in your file and will be the default in future files. In the next video, we will add some structure to the web page to hold the content.